O God, you are my God, earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Seeking the Heart of God, next on So What? Hi, I'm Chris Dorman. And I'm Don Waite. Welcome back to So What? Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at those things which serve as barriers to keep us from intimacy with Christ. And I was hopeful that as we did that, those of you who, do not, who did not know that pain is a normal part of the Christian life, those of you who are not aware of the dangers of worldliness, that you would now have more information that the Holy Spirit could draw on in, in drawing you nearer to Christ. But then something happened this week that really pissed me off. Someone who knows all that information, someone who has all those facts, and yet is really struggling with his relationship with Christ. Are you talking about me? I'm talking about Don. He pissed me off. He really <laughs> pissed me off this week. Yeah. Um, I've really been having a hard time over the last couple of weeks, and it's because the Lord's been ripping open some, some wounds, and he's making me look at some things I haven't wanted to look at for a very long time. And uh, the thing that actually made Chris unhappy was the fact that I was Pissed. taking everything on myself in some relationships in the church that I'd had for many, many years that got broken and severed. And I, and I, I kept telling myself and I kept struggling with this idea that I am the, really ultimately the reason. I should have seen these things. I should have I shouldn't have been able to spot things. I obviously am a problem. I am the issue. And therefore, that's why everything went south. And I said, Don, why don't you stop lying to yourself? Stop kidding yourself. You weren't the problem. They rejected you. Face it. That hurts too bad. I don't want to be rejected. I don't want to face the pain of people shutting those relationships down because they're done with me. But what, what does lying to yourself about it, how does that inhibit your relationship with the Lord? Well, it's a complete barrier. I can only get so close to Jesus when I'm not, when I'm not being honest about that and go through the pain. I've been for so long wanting to go around pain and not go through the pain because it's pain. No, we don't like pain. Right? I don't want that. And yet, what, what's happened is I, I have not been able to even begin to start to heal on some of this stuff because I, I, I won't really address it in my own heart. I just keep avoiding it. I keep avoiding it. You know, you go around it, around it, around it. It's like you're pulling open the app and you're like, where's the accident? I got to go around it. I'm just kidding. It's red. I got to go around it. Right. And that's, but, but beloved, that's what we all do. That's what you do. That's what I do. We avoid facing the painful realities of our experiences yeah. because we, we just can't face it. It's, it's too confusing. It's too, it's too difficult. And it's easier then to create a narrative that we can manage, that we can control. Don couldn't reject the, he couldn't, ex, he couldn't control the fact or accept the fact that he had been rejected. And so he created a narrative that he could control. Oh, well, you know what? I can have better relationships if I just do X, Y, and Z differently. Oh, you see? So he created a narrative in his mind that might make him feel better, but ultimately is a lie. Right. And I lived like that for years and years and years, where you try to control and manage your relationships so that you don't get hurt. And C.S. Lewis has a great quote with that. You know, no, no one likes to get hurt, but he said, to love it all is to be vulnerable. And many of you know this quote. And, that, and, and, and if you've been hurt enough, eventually what you do is you stop giving of your heart. You stop giving of yourself. And then what happens, of course, is your heart doesn't break, but then it goes a step further. As C.S. Lewis says, he says, your heart not only doesn't break, it becomes unbreakable and you become cold and callous and rigid and what has happened to your intimacy with Christ over the last years as you've been unwilling to let him in and address the pain in your heart well it dries you up it dries you up like you're in a desert yeah. that's what it does yeah. were you thirsting yes. for God were you thirsting for God like a man in a dry and weary land in that opening passage was that you I was thirsty I've been thirsty. But were you able to satisfy that thirst? Well, no, because you're going, I'm going from one place to another to try to find the satisfaction of the thirst in other things. Looking in all the wrong places for satisfaction. Beloved, that's what we do. And we're, this is not new to us. Israel did the exact same thing. And Jeremiah tells us this in chapter 2 when God is speaking. 
He says, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. How had you forsaken God? Chris, I, I looked to Bible study. I looked to controlling the relationships that I had, controlling the conversation, all of those things so that we didn't have to go deep and deal with it. And what happens when things got deep? What'd you do then? Well, you can just abandon it. You just right. leave it. You manage the conversation. You manage the risk. You're still in control. Absolutely. And what does that do to your relationship with God? It just cuts it off. It There's kills it. There. It kills it. We were, there. Beloved, we were designed for relationships. That's right. God made us for a relationship with himself and with one another. And when we, when we put walls around our heart, we cut ourselves off not only from other people, but from God himself, who wants us to feel that pain. Why does he want us to feel that pain? Why? So, so that, go, we, say so that we, so that we will go to him for healing. That's right. If we can't acknowledge the pain and work through the pain, we'll never be healed. We're saying, I'm, I'm okay with this festering wound that's kind of abscessing and, and, and getting all like gnarly and stuff. And I'm just going to let it kind of just fester and get gnarly. It's like, no, the Lord wants healing for you. But you've got to get to him. And the only way th to that is through the pain. And you know, how many of you have people in your life who you know who really know the Bible really well? Mm. Who are very knowledgeable about the scriptures. And if you have a theological question, you can go to them and he or she can answer that question for you. And you'll, you'll see they'll have the support for it. They'll be able to explain it to you. How many of you have people like that in your life? Now, do those people encourage you by their knowledge of the scripture uh, primarily? Or does their knowledge of the scripture and their, and their character and their attitude and their way encourage you and inspire you to draw nearer to Christ, to want more intimacy with Christ? How many of those people who have all the right answers right. don't have very many friends? How many of those people who know all the right things are basically alone? How many, how many clergymen, how many people in the pulpit have very many close friends? Because they've become cold and rigid. Why? How do you become cold and rigid? By studying the Bible. Because, beloved, you can use the Bible as an excuse to keep from drawing nearer to God. What? Yes. How That's can true. that be? Because it creates a protective barrier. Yes. We can use it to basically be a huge bubble around us and nobody can actually get in and get to know us. That's right. That's right. I always have an answer for every question. Right. I always have, have the biblical thing to say. And therefore everything's okay. Everything's all right. But I can create a situation then where basically I've cut people off and they, they realize that they really cannot come in and get to know me. Or can you be so busy with church activities that when people say, hey, you know what, hey, you're really involved in this activity, I appreciate it. Can we go get some coffee and spend some time? I'd really like to get to know you more deeply. Can we talk more about that? And you're like, oh, I just can't. I'm just so busy. I got all these things going on. I just don't have time for that. Could you be so busy doing Christian things that you don't really connect in, with Christian people? deeply, profoundly, in a way where they can impact you and you can impact them. So, you might have all the answers, and yet God may still feel a billion miles away from you. Yeah. And while may, many of you may have been encouraged by the series, you're still wrestling, and you're wondering, what is keeping me from real intimacy with God, beloved? You have forsaken your first love. Maybe not intentionally, maybe not knowingly, right. but in a way you might, that could be the reason why. It could be that you are digging your own cisterns. You're looking for satisfaction, for hope, for joy, for peace in all the wrong places. When God is saying, go through the pain. When he's saying, trust me through the pain, trust me in spite of the pain, ask the difficult questions and I will carry you through. Maybe that's what you've got to do. And maybe that's the one thing you say, I cannot do, because to do it will kill me. But you know what, Chris? Sometimes we have to die. Sometimes we have to die oh, yes. so that we can have life. You know, the whole time we've been talking, we have this little thing sit behind us, this little bug. What is that thing? Oh. This little thimble. Is this enough to satisfy thirst? This is like a broken cistern that I dug up for myself. It's not going to satisfy a thing. We need the living waters that only Jesus himself can give us. 
A thimble full of water is not what we need. This is not what I need, Chris. This is not what you need. We need so much more than this. We need a floodgate to open up. The floodgate of the love of Jesus Christ. Who can even fathom the love that God has for us in Him? We can't be satisfied with this. This isn't enough. And we can't build barriers around our hearts so that this could actually be enough. We lie to ourselves all the time. And that's not enough, beloved. He wants so much more for you. He does, he really does, but you've got to be honest. You've got to face the pain, and you've got to trust him. And you gotta go about dealing with your pain his way, mm. not your own. The way of the cross. When Christ calls a man, he bids him, come and die. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. We'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. We'll see you real soon.